guys, Instinctive here, or uh, Trent Stabler. I am going to uh, talk about mastering today, and this is uh, going to be a pretty lengthy video, but it's a very important topic, it's a very wanted topic, I, it's hard to find um, recent mastering tutorials. Uh, Dorncourt has a, a light one, which is good, I'm going to try to expand on that a little bit, but um, go check him out if you haven't already. Um, again, I am not, not by any means a perfect master, I, 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 I am not perfect at it. This is more of um, just a light master. Uh, you can you can master um, however you want in reason. Uh, like if you want a really heavy master, if you want a light master. But I usually go for a light to medium master, so that means like not a lot on it. Not a lot of pressure put on the uh, mastering phase. Uh, I'll do it when I put out freebies. I'll do it when I submit to labels, because um, mastering does make your track sound better. Now, to clear things up, it does not make a bad mixed track sound good. It can make a well mixed track sound better. So, um, mastering um, is is very important, but only if you have a good mix and a good track beforehand. So, uh, I guess I'll start off by saying that uh, I think the most important part of mastering is mixing. <laughs> The mixing phase. Um, that's uh, counterintuitive. It doesn't really make any sense, I know, because it's not the mastering phase, but mastering relies on how well you can mix your track. So, you want to make sure uh, you can have uh, you can have good mixing skills. I've been doing this for four or five years, so I think I've pretty much starting to get it down. Um, for example, I, a long time ago, not a long time ago, when Electricity EP came out, I don't know if you guys, if you haven't checked that out, you can use it on, you can check it out on my channel, but, um, I paid a Dark Elixir, uh, who was a great dubstep artist, to master it for me, and he did a great job, but they were, came out subpar because I was not great at mixing yet. Um, if y you need to have a good, great mix to have a good master. So, you need to learn, you need to make sure you know, um, how to mix well, as well. So, that's, uh, should be your first priority. Um, so first of all, when you're making a track, have mastering bypassed. I don't know if there's going to be anything in there by default, but you want to have it bypassed so you make sure there's nothing uh, going on. You don't want to make, you don't want to master until you're completely done your track. I am doing this. I'm a bad example. Uh, this track is something I'm working on, um, but uh, it's. Uh, I think it'd have a good opportunity to master what I have so far. So um, I guess let's just take a listen to what I have so far anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. If I do say so myself, I um, it's not your typical song, uh, EDM song. It's 90 BPM, but yeah, hopefully this will come out soon. I'm uh, finishing up, finish finishing it up. Um, but yeah, um, this is not finished yet, but I'm going to pretend it is, and I'm going to master it. So uh, the first thing in mastering is to make sure you have a good mix. Uh, this means multiple things. Uh, if you haven't watched my M-Class series tutorials on the equalizer, compressor, maximizer, and stereo imager, go watch those now. I'll link it in the description because uh, you won't understand a lot of what I'm doing. And you want to understand. You don't want to just be able to f you, you know, follow a tutorial. You want to actually know exact kind of what's going on at least. So go watch those uh, if you haven't already. So uh, yeah, what I did on each track is I compressed and stereo imaged and EQ'd each track. Um, as you can see. Now, a lot of these, uh, this is the only real compressor in there, um, for this one. Uh, but these are the side chaining. So, uh, I, I'll do a tutorial on side chaining if you guys want it, but side chaining is basically ducking and, uh, the volume of the track to, uh, make room for the drums, like for the kick and the snare. So, um, it sounds punchy, you know. Uh, so, yeah. I compressed and EQ'd each track, and what I end up with is, this is just, this is stupid, this was just because I wanted to, uh, it was, I was too lazy to turn everything up, but I'm gonna, you want to make sure your, uh, fader, master fader is below zero. You don't, you don't really, it's not a needed thing, you can, it doesn't really matter, but I like to have it, you know, it's just kind of a superstitious thing. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, now, when uh, you want to go on the mastering phase, you want to have um, a decent dynamic range. Uh, the reason you compress an EQ and stuff on each individual track before you do it to the master is because if you don't, it'll put a lot of work on the master and it'll sound distorted or it'll come out just subpar. So you want to make sure you do that. And uh, I'd say you want to have usually uh, four, around 4 dB as the highs, um, and you want to have a decent dynamic range, so you really don't want a huge one. Um, but let's, let's look at what it is. It's, see, it's very quiet right now. Um, so what I need to do is I need to turn it up to here to master it. I, you don't need to, but I'm going to because I don't want to put too much stress on the master. So what I'm about to do is going to make some people angry. I don't know <laughs> if any pros watch this. Again, I'm not a pro by any means, but this is like what I like to do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shift click all the tracks on this song, right click and route to a new output bus. Why? Well, because I am going to turn it up a little bit. So volume. I could just turn this up, but I like having two to control. So I'll turn this up. So yeah, that's good. Just round, uh, see, take note of the dynamic range. That's a pretty good dynamic range. Um, and the highs are about four, so that's good. You know, let's just leave this just so I don't have to. Okay, so, yeah, now we can begin mastering. Um, again, makes it's vital that you do what I said. You want to EQ and, you know, uh, put M class on each of the tracks. So, um, yeah, but now we can move on to the master. So step one is mixing and each individual track. So now we can move on to the master section. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink some soda. Hold on. All right. You're going to want to insert FX. This is... Uh, we're going to select the default mastering suite. All these are just presets that contain the same four uh, M-Class series that Propeller had as preset for you. We just want, when you master, just take the default because you can add whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You don't need all this stuff. So, there we go. As you can see, there's all four of the M-Class uh, series in it already. Um, and I usually just use four. Like you can add another compressor, but what we're going to do first is we're going to go through all of them. So, uh, let's start with the EQ. The EQ in mastering is usually used to boost the lows and the highs. Uh, you can also boost certain frequencies for more punch or whatnot. I usually just boost the lows and the highs. So, what we're going to do is, uh, and when again, everything is a light touch. You do not want a huge, especially on the EQ, you do not, if you, let's see what happens when I turn up, like, the gain all the way up here. There's way too much bass. So I'm just I just want them and the track already has a good amount of bass. I put it some sub bass in it. So I'll just uh, make sure, you know, about 0.9. Very, very slight. You can mess around with the frequency in the EQ, but it's not gonna do much since it's only 0.9 gain. Okay, now the high shelf. I don't know when you turn it on and it's way up there, I don't know why. But if I were that that just sounds god awful, it hurts. So let's uh I would say, you know, usually you don't want to go too much above two, I'd say, and gain in the master. Let's go 1.7. That sounds pretty good. You should be able to notice that difference. So, yeah. Um, now we're going to move on to the stereo imager. Again, stereo image each track first, just like EQ and compressing, as needed. Um... But what the goal with the stereo imager is to make the lows mono and the highs a little wider. So we're going to solo the low band, and uh, again, if you need to see how the stereo imager works, go watch my tutorial on it. But yeah, we're going to slow the low band, slow solo the low bands, and we're going to listen. And this is all played by ear. You want to just find where you think the lows um, should be separated from the highs. So, a good uh, a good judgment call is uh, to see where the snare is. You don't want any of the snare, but you might want that little, you know, the low end of the snare there. So there's a little bit too much high in there. So you can barely hear the snare. So that's good. I'll, I'll go ahead and put this all mono. It should be. It is. Most of this is already mono because I already stale your image, but uh, there are going to be some parts in the track that aren't. So you want to make the lows mono. And now, the high band, you can hear it, it's just solo the high band, and we're going to make this a little bit wider, so we'll put it, say, about 16. And back to normal. And it sounds good. 
So now uh, the compressor. We're going to not only use this compressor, but we're going to use the master compressor up here, but we'll do that in a little bit. So since uh, we have two compressors, we do not want to put a, sh a, a shit ton of pressure on each of the compressors. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, maybe have this com just compressed, you know, a little bit of uh, minus four over there, something like that. You can adjust the threshold and the ratio to do what make do what you want. All right, that's about good. Um, the attack, I would say, you, you want it relatively low. You don't need it. You don't need it all the way down. But um, this is all up to ear. It's very hard to hear. Uh, you notice the difference between the attack and release in the, in the compressor. It's very hard to hear, but it's easy to see. The release, the higher. You can check out the compressor tutorial. But so yeah, let's put this about. I don't know, halfway is about good. Um, so yeah, now uh, what we're going to do. What we're going to do is go over here to the master compressor, turn it on, and what we're going to use this for, um, while this is used to reduce the dynamic range, well, all compressors are, but while this is mainly used for that, this one is going to be used to make this make the tracks glue together a little bit more. So we'll pull the attack down to about 0.3 milliseconds. Uh, the ratio keep it about 2 to 1. And let's play it and see. You want it to be just acting between 0 and 4. Um, and you want you want it pretty much constantly on the release. You can leave it where you want at 0.6, I would say. But yeah, uh, you want it to be acting. So uh, let's see. I can turn the threshold down a little bit. See, so yeah, that's constantly acting. And don't get discouraged if your track sounds like shit in the middle of mastering phase. Like right now, it doesn't sound as good as it did, but that's for a reason. So, what we're going to do is, uh, after that, we're going to turn the makeup gain up a little bit. This, uh, um, so when you compress it, the, the, the volume does naturally go down a little bit. Um, so, we'll, we can, you can turn it back up. That's what I'm going to do. And see, now this compressor is, is acting a lot, so I think this is good. We can turn the threshold a little bit up a little bit. It's acting a bit too much. So, yeah, there we go. And as you can see, dynamic range isn't huge. Um... Well, actually, it's pretty huge, but yeah, this compressor is uh, about good, but I think it's a bit too much, actually, so I'll turn, turn it off a little bit. There we go. So that's about good. Um, so now we're going to move on to the limiter and the maximizer. So the limiter is very fragile. You, don't, you do not want it to limit too much, because if it does, well, it just hard clips everything. It, it, it does not sound good. Uh, so you want it... You want it just acting just a tiny bit. So you want to look for the green light to go on just a tiny bit. There we go. I think it's mostly what it's doing is it's um clipping the snare a little bit because the snare is a bit loud. I agree, but yeah. So oh, that's see, that's too much. I don't want it to go. There we go. That's good. So yeah, you want it on four millisecond look ahead, so it's not going to, so it's going to limit and make sure it always limits it um, on time. So yeah, you can have the attack on fast and the release on auto. It doesn't really matter too much because you're not going to be limiting it a lot. But here's the uh, one of the most important parts: um, the uh, the output gain. Now there are many ways to do this, but um, and <laughs> can uh, people are going to not uh, think that's too great that what I'm doing probably because I don't know if this is the conventional way of doing things. But basically what the soft clip is, uh, again, I'll, you can check out my tutorial for in-depth, but um, it's just going to it's gonna clip it so it doesn't go above zero, basically. Um, and the amount determines how much. So uh, what we want to do is we want the dynamic range to be uh, pretty short. And uh, contrary to popular belief, red up here is fine. It just means it's... Uh, it just means it is compressed a lot, which is good for what we want nowadays. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the output gain up. As you can see, uh, that was acting a lot. So, uh, and you can determine, uh, you can, uh, not determine, you can uh, control how much the soft clip acts by the amount. So let's see, 
if I were to turn it all the way up, it's making sure it's clipping right, you know, below zero. So it's, 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 and it, you can probably hear it. But if we turn it all the way down, basically, uh, up is more of a softer, smoother transitions. But what I like to do is I usually like to have it just about 22, so it's a fourth way. More towards the, um, zero. And, um, let me take some more soda. <sighs> so, what we've done is we've made it so the, um, the track is louder and the dynamic range is quieter. Is lower, sorry. And, um, that's pretty much what we want, so let's look at that. See, I think that's a bit too much, so I'm going to turn the output gain down a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. That's what we want. Something like that. So that sounds pretty good, actually. I think, um, the, and now what you can do is what you, you can sit back and listen and see if there's anything wrong. And then what you can do is you can, for example, I think the snare is too, still too loud. It's kind of getting compressed too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, that's not right, go to the drums and I'm going to turn the snares down. That's better. So let's go ahead and look at it uh, with the mastering and without. So let's go without, let's bypass it. Pretty much the same, but quieter. Now if we turn it on. Now, what I would do is I would spend much more time on this because it does sound a little bit iffy and edgy. Um, but uh, for now, that's that's the basics of what you want to do. Now, what you'll do after, what I'll do is I'll go... Um, I'm actually going to scrap this mastering because I'm not on this track yet. But uh, what I would do is I would you go through these again and then just make and adjust everything once more. For example, like I think it's a bit too compressed. Actually. So let's turn the ratio down. Up. And that's better. Sounding better already. So yeah, um, that's my mastering tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. I hope I didn't miss anything. This is going to be a lengthy tutorial, but it's a very important topic. So um, like this video if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful, and comment. Subscribe for more tutorials. All that jazz. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, let me know if you have questions. Did I miss anything? I hope I didn't. Again, this is probably not the standard way of what you should do mastering, but this is what I do, and I think my masters sound pretty good. You can listen for yourself if you want on my channel. But, um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.